Well, good morning, good day, or whatever time it is. How are ya? Have you ever heard of Fister North Star? Also known as Hokuto no Ken. Who am I kidding? Of course you have! It's one of the most famous anime and manga series in the entire world. It has spawned movies, TV series, video games, the pachinko, and not to mention. In other words, it became pretty well known. And it all started with, of course, with the original manga series, which was first serialized in Weekly Shonen Jump in 1983 and was written by Buruso, aka Shofunimura, real name Yoshiki Okamura, and illustrated by Tetsuo Hara. However, have you ever heard of this one? Probably not, then. You may be asking yourself. Hey, what is Ken the Great Bear Fist? <laughs> and before you ask, no, I'm not talking about the unreleased English dub. I'm talking about the practically unknown and, let's just say, less than stellar, Swedish dub. Oh yes. And you might be wondering, how on earth did you get it? Well there little buddy, to answer that we need to go back to early February. I was at my dad's place and we were watching movies and talking to each other. The usual stuff. But then, he gave me this. This is the Ginza catalog. It's basically a, well, catalog where you can order movies, music, and things like that through the mail. Pretty old fashioned, I know. Anyway, I was browsing through this thing and almost immediately, a DVD caught my eye. A DVD which I recognized. Ken, the Great Bear Fist. Why did I recognize it if it was, as I said, practically unknown? That's because I was first introduced to the thing by Vine Sauce Vark Skelter Joel <laughs> when he reacted to it back in 2014 in this video. You should go and watch it if you haven't. It's pretty funny. Or should I say it's fecal fun? <clears throat> anyway, because of that, I quickly ordered this sucker for 10 whole Swedish kronor, which is the equivalent of this. Money well spent, I guess. And after a few weeks of waiting later, I got it. And I was so happy about it that I took a picture of it and posted it to the Vine Sauce community subreddit. And it got relatively popular, which is enough for me to feel slightly more happier about my life. Yes. Now in the comments of this thread I said I was going to rip this DVD and send it to Vine Sauce Joel. I didn't do that because I didn't want the risk of me being arrested for piracy. And you know Sweden and piracy has a, let's just say, tenuous relationship with each other. So instead, I decided to make this video, which I feel is a bit safer, don't you think? Before we take a look at the actual movie, let's just first look at the DVD itself, starting with the front cover. And you know what they say, you can't judge things by their cover, but... Oh... Oh, you can with this one. First off, that anime and manga tag makes me unreasonably irritated. It's like the DVD can't decide on what it contains. What, is it a PowerPoint slideshow presentation of the show, or is it, well, a movie? Make up your goddamn mind! Oh, look at that title. Those fonts and that, and that glow effect. It, it looks so tacky and cheap. It looks like when he first discovered Microsoft Word art as a kid and just went buck wild of it. Nice. Oh, and the title itself? Ken, the great bear fist. 
Why is it called that? Well, I can explain that using this simple to follow graph. <clears throat> the original Japanese name for Fister no Star is Hokuto no Ken, which when translated means Fister the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper being the constellation and the shape of the scar on Kenshiro's chest. The Latin name for the Big Dipper is Ursa Major, meaning Greater Bear. The name of Kenshiro is. Kenshiro, which can be shortened down to just Ken, and Ken punches people using his fist. And so, combining these three factors together, we get. Oh sh. Looking at the other side, we can see that the cheapness factor drastically increases by that bland mustard yellow color. Those two half hazardly placed images, and of course, that interesting description, which I'm going to translate for you. The legend of the man with the bare fist. Earth is destroyed after Third World War, a devastating nuclear war. Buildings are in ruins, the human justice is erased, violence spreads like poisonous weeds. A world where violence isn't a problem, it's the solution. Ken is gifted with an old fighting technique where will and the brain creates great power and strength. He uses his strength to fight for justice. Fists fly through the air, heads explode into pieces, never before have so many been killed so quickly by one single man. Legend speaks of the man with the bare fist. I mean, I'm okay with that description. It doesn't really explain the full scope of the plot, but it kinda makes you want to watch it if you've never heard of Fister Nostar before. Oh, I like this little tag here. Family movie for ages 15. Nothing like a good family movie like one featuring brutal violence that will most likely scar anyone who's in that age. Oh wait, it's from the 80s. Never mind, that stuff is pretty standard. Well, with that out of the way, let's pop this sucker in, press play, and enjoy the ride, I guess. The movie starts and... Hey! I was talking here! Please don't interrupt me! Anyway, the movie starts with that, well, explanation. But then... We cut to the intro with that amazing theme song, specifically Iwa Torimo Dose by the absolutely kick-ass band Crystal King. And if you ask me, it's probably one of the best theme songs for an animated series I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh, it's so goddamn good! Now I'm happy that he didn't butcher this masterpiece by dubbing it into Swedish, which is pretty much the only positive thing I can say about this DVD. After that, we... Excuse me, but would you kindly shut up? <sighs> we see... <sighs> we... You need to shut the fuck up! So by this point, you probably already noticed that something looks a bit off with this movie. If you haven't, well... Take a closer look at that... Yeah, and there's a reason for why it looks like this. Though, I will explain it later. Alright, Fister Nostar wouldn't be Fister Nostar without Ken. How's he doing? Oh, well, I'm sure he. Oh. Oh boy, looks like he's going to whoop these bastards at. Uh, uh huh. Anyway, set here, or should I say, and his gang goes and look what just happened, and... Did I ever mention that this DVD is rife with Don't believe me? Well, take a look at this. I didn't edit this. Oh, don't worry. There's going to be a lot more examples of this later. Oh, you'll see. You'll see. Meanwhile... 
Är den där luffan igen? Det är förfärligt. Hej, there's Bat. I wonder what he sounds like. Det är lika bra att vi hugger huvudet av dig, Bat. Jag försök bara. Jag lovar att om ni gör det så kommer jag tillbaka och spöka för er allihop era skurkar. Excuse me, but what the fuck? Look at the mask, my boy. Listen, I've got nothing against voice actors doing voices for characters that are opposite of their gender. I mean, for example, look at Heio Ichiruosai. She did a voice for, well, Bat, among others, for pretty much the entirety of the original Fist of the Star series. She did and still does an amazing job at not only doing a voice that fits a character like a glove, but also invoking the character's personality and emotions in a way that makes it feel real. Why? Because she's a talented voice actor with many years of experience. The same cannot be said for whoever did the voice for Bats here. Instead of evoking the character of a brat teenager who'll exploit anything possible for his own personal gain and survival, it invokes a bitter middle-aged adult who smokes 10 packs a day and screams at minimum wage workers. Talk about a mismatch! After some, what I can only describe as general chaos. We get to hear what Ken's voice sound like and... Oh, Ken, Ken, my poor little Ken. They made you sound like an old school bus driver who didn't get enough sleep and his voice is nearly gone because he shouted at two dozen kids non-stop to stop fighting each other and to SHUT THE FUCK UP! JESUS! Now we're just gonna skip ahead a little bit to when Ken meets the old man who wants to see him bare chest. Not in any sexual way. I think. Seems that Seth and his gang also want to take a gander at Ken's chest. I don't blame them. But the old man isn't having any of that. But almost immediately gets out using his sheer strength. And the sound he makes as he does so is the... Uh... When I said that Ken sounded like an old school bus driver who didn't get enough sleep, I meant that. In fact, for every grunt Ken makes, it gets added to this counter down here. And don't even think about using this as a drinking game, because your liver and kidneys are going to fail harder than when you try to hit on your crush in middle school. Moving along. He's about to kick these guys' asses. Ah! 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 Ken! Ken! Oh god. Why did they make Lin sound like an awful amalgamation between a child and an adult? AKA a teenager. Right. For some reason. For some goddamn reason, this scene is repeated twice. I don't even know how that's possible. Do you know how that's possible? Du kommer att förlora. Vad kan du göra mot alla mina killar och först ska jag slå ihjäl den här lilla bruden? Good god, what an absolute mess. Okay, first, instead of getting Ken's awesome guttural scream... ...in the 
penis. We got the sounds of a constipated school bus driver. Secondly, we got no. Okito, hundred No. Kaodo ni mo kikanwei. Omae wa mou shinde iru. And no goddamn death. Nani? Oa takubi de kizebu. Anyway, Ken and Beth leaves the town to Lin's dismay. Adu para go and Ken, Buffy. Det är sagt att den stora björnens stjärna kommer där det är oordning. Den mannen kom hit för att hjälpa byn, att hjälpa byn där Linn bodde. Förstår ni? No, no. What kind of duct tape grammatical structure was that? It's like the translator of this dub got progressively more and more drunk as he went along doing his job. I mean, how can one do such a thing? Oh Jesus, fuck! <laughs> After we get introduced to Bat's makeshift Dune buggy and quality dialogue. We get to this scene. This is where we get introduced to Spade and his gang. And prepare yourself, because this is going to be a clusterfuck of awfulness. There's a lot of things wrong with this scene, but I'm only going to focus on one of them, and that is the translation, or rather the butchering of the technique move. Or the two-fingered vacuum grip, which this DVD translates as the Great Bear's Finger Vacuum Grip. Which I have to admit does sound rather badass, though starting the name of basically anything with the Great Bears kind of automatically makes it sound more badass. <laughs> Pat goes to get the rice that Spade and his gang stole from Smith. He distracts them, grabs the rice, and receives the worst insult I've ever heard. Spade just called him a small pancake. That's way too harsh, even for post-apocalyptic standards. So Ken and Beth return Smith back to his town. But Spade and his gang were quick on their heels. Ken runs after him, but it doesn't go well for the townspeople. Or Smith. Well, Ken isn't really happy about that. So he beats the ever loving shit out of space lackeys with ease. And, of course, we can't forget about Spade. Ah, I see that Ken is referring to the Swedish football, ice hockey, and bridge player, Put the Cock. Ah! 
Oh boy, we're about to get introduced to Shin, probably one of the most badass and memorable antagonists in anime history. Let's see how this DVD completely ruins it. Det är många människor som kan uppskatta god musik. Men bara ett fåtal har egenskapen att njuta av det onda. En man som kan se en gud i ögonen och har tillräckligt stark vilja att binda upp honom kommer att vara arvtagaren till detta paradis med alla deras skönheter. Rymden är besegrad. Well, what the fuck? They made him sound like a wizard from a low-budget fantasy RPG. That's the least intimidating villain voice I've ever heard. Hell, I could do a better job than that. Det är många människor som kan uppskatta god musik, men bara ett fåtal har egenskapen av att njuta av det onda. Den man som kan se en gud i ögonen och har tillräckligt stark vilja att binda upp honom och att vara arvtagaren till detta paradis med alla deras skönheter. Rymden är besegrad. See, that wasn't very difficult, was it now? Right, let's get back to the dynamic duo. Bat spots Lin being kidnapped and quickly alerts Ken about it. Det har hänt något hemskt. Lin har blivit kidnappad. Jag såg allt sammans. Hon fördes bort i en last. Ah, det är larvigt. Hon kan inte vara här. Ken, for God's sake. Lin, a little girl is being kidnapped. Can't you just, at least, just at least show a shred of empathy, you goddamn inconceivably dense mongrel? <clears throat> so they go to the slave town of Dorado, or... I thought that they would go to Dorado. ...to try and find Lin. And we get some more quality voice acting as a bonus. This is Diamond, by the way. And he sounds like he smokes as many packs a day as Bat does, if not double the amount. Uh, you know, at some points, this dub reminds me of that infamous ghost story dub. You. What do you want? Thanks a lot, man. Huh? <laughs> I think she's right. You are retarded. What'd I say? Where are you going? Jesus Christ, that dub is both very blessed and very cursed at the same time. This dub, however... <laughs> it's just cursed, and not in a good way. Uh, <laughs> Oh, we're about to hear Ken's good old catchphrase. Du är redan död. After that, Ken and Bat are all like. And where is Lynn? But well. There he is! Du har inte klarat av hälften av din uppgift än. Jag är ledsen. Hör nu på mig. Du klarar av din uppgift innan natten, annars ska du dö. Vad visst? Ah, the emotional display here between Santa Claus and Lynn here is quite exquisite. Anyway. Looks like Bat is sad because he couldn't find Lin within the seven minute time spent he searched for her. Oh. 
こんばんはバートジャズのカコフォニーを演奏した結果あなたは私を召喚しました銀が投獄された場所の正確な場所を知っているのでそれは素晴らしいですだから私に従ってくださいオーケー Seems that the two waited until midnight to start looking for Lin. Again. Priorities. Never heard of it. Never understood it. Oh, look. There's Club. Another villain that Ken is going to kill in about a minute. Not really worth the time describing him other than his Vega claws and his voice that exudes the raw energy of life gave a passion. That's not the show, then. Okay. But all I do is pour me, va? No. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, 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 there, there. Oh, yeah, there. There, my boy, and yes, some committee for a grave as an egg and grove. Eh, let's see how this fight is going to go down. Sätt igång, mår du inte bra? Vad gjorde han med mig? Of course. Terrible edits caused by... What did I fucking expect? Det var ett specialslag. Det träffar en mycket viktig punkt. Du kommer att dö om 30 sekunder. Va? Vänta! Hjälp mig snälla! Jag vill inte dö! Dö! Wow, for once they actually showed a death. I mean, it wasn't very bloody, but congratulations, you actually had the guts. I'm, I'm very impressed. So, uh, Lin is saved. Probably should have mentioned that. Oh god, Crundle Quest, I mean, I mean, Shin. How's he doing? You know, there's so much censorship in this DVD that I'm no longer angry at it. I'm just disappointed. Could we get some actual violence? Please? Skynda på! Ja visst! Varför tar det så lång tid? I'll take it. Skynda på, jag är trött! Oh, listen to that thrilled R. Trött! I do like myself some good R's. Speaking of R's... Luta med det där! Vad sa du för något? Damn boy, he's extra thick! This is hard and, you know, what's even the point of introducing these villains if this DVD is just going to kill them off literally five minutes later? Well, alright, I can tell you the two most notable things about him. One, he do be packing that chunk. And two, when he sees his own blood, he goes mental. Anyway, Ken, Bat and Lin are going to save some prisoners. Yeah, I didn't. After that ass whooping, Bat and Lin goes inside to try and free the prisoners. But then... Ah, 
Incredible. Yeah, you sure are. Well, forget about them, because there are more important things to focus on. Like Shin. Oh hey, there's Julia, Ken's fiance. Ken! I hope that you see the sun go somewhere. Julia, for hell of it, I wander around my nakin. That the weather is on fine, so there's sun, and even more sun. All right. In all seriousness, for what terrible and uncharacteristic voice acting the majority of the characters seem to have, whoever did the voice for Julia, who probably also did the voice for Bat and Lin, actually did an okay job. She actually sounds like what I think Julia should sound like. And I'm really impressed because of that. Then there's Shin. Julia. Se på dem här, Julia, se. Det verkar som du inte tycker de är något. Ah, Julia, varför är jag så hjälplös i ditt sällskap? Shin is shit. <laughs> right. Ken, Bat and Lin, together with the rescued prisoners, are going to some mountains to try and find a hiding spot. However... Heart and his gang were already there. And you know what that means. Some more quality voice acting. Stick! <laughs> Well, all that fighting didn't really work out because all of the three prisoners are dead. This makes Ken, as you can expect, very angry. Says the guy who was about two and a half meters tall with the physical physique of an overweight Michelin man. The right tire changes everything. God fucking damn it! I paid a lot of money for that! Oh shit! Looks like he needs to put some more effort if he's going to defeat Hart. Let's see what he's going to do. Det finns två planeter i universum, norra stjärnan och södra stjärnan. Universum består alltid av två motsatta saker, man och kvinna, mörk hud och ljus. Whoa! Hold your horses there, buddy old pal, let me boy. Narrator, you see this? This figure is supposed to represent yin and yang. You know, the concept of opposite forces being complementary and interconnected with each other. It's a representation. You're not supposed to take this figure literally, you insensitive, ignorant, imbecile! King's karate knip, it must be him. My karate has no fiends. I feel like you're defeated. Wait, who's this guy? Well, this is Joker. A character who is in this DVD for literally 30 seconds. What's even the fucking point of talking about this bastard? <laughs> Oh, 
It seems that instead of being repeatedly kicked in the stomach by Ken and then being finished off with. I guess Hart died of a heart attack. I'm losing my goddamn mind! <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we have finally reached the credits, and my god, what an experience this was! Was it great or was it painful? You decide. As for me, despite how I gave this thing some, shall we say, strong opinions about the dubbing, the censorship, and such, I quite enjoyed it. Also, there's something about one of the most violent anime series being mangled and twisted into a quote-unquote family movie for ages 15 and up. That is quite funny to me. It's like turning Elfin Lead into a children's book. Please go the fuck to sleep. Or berserk into an aerobic exercise video. Turning something that is inherently violent into something that is Less so. Please go the fuck to now, of course, I can't forget to mention the credits themselves. The song currently playing here is Yuria, Ian Ni, again played by Crystal King. Now, you may have already seen and heard that something's amiss here. If you haven't figured it out, let me spell it out for you. First, there doesn't seem to be any kind of text at all. Like, no actor's name, no company names, and the most damn thing of all, no goddamn song lyrics! It's the same thing for the intro sequence. Speaking of lyrics, the other thing is that uh, there is no singing. It's completely instrumental. Here's a comparison. The one on the left is from this DVD, and the right one from the original Japanese one. A pretty strange thing to censor, huh? Well, that about wraps it up. Holy shit, my eyes! What kind of abomination of a menu is this? What am I looking at? This crusty ass font is as jagged as my goddamn sanity right now. They spelled Lin's name wrong. Why the fuck does it have a different title? What the fuck is happening here? <sighs> Sorry about that. Got a little emotional there. <clears throat> now, there are some questions about this DVD that need to be answered. Specifically, why, when, and who? Let's start with the why and when. With the help of an external DVD drive, we can take a look at the contents inside of this disc. And looking inside, we can see that all of the files are dated to March the 18th, 2004. Well, now we know when this thing was released. But that still doesn't explain why the video quality was as clear as molasses, the rampant amount of censorship, or why the main menu had a different title. For that, we need to go to Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, to find some clues. To be more precise, we need to go to the Swedish article for Fister North Star. And at the very bottom, there's this three sentence long snippet of info. I'll translate it for you. The Swedish dub. In Sweden, the first few episodes were released on VHS under the title Ken Rättvisans Kämpe, or Ken, the Fighter of Justice. The movie is also on DVD under the title Ken, the Great Bear Fist. Many scenes were cut in the dubbed version. Hmm. So this movie was released on VHS under that title. And sure enough, looking it up in the Swedish media database, bingo, we got the original release date. 
1986. That explains the terrible video quality. I just used a very worn copy of that tape for the DVD re-release. Instead of using, well, anything else that looks better than this. <laughs> but that doesn't explain why there was so much censorship that even the Chinese government would be like. I, uh... Or does it? Remember the original release date? Well, there's something special about that year. Because during that time, Sweden's movie censorship law was in full effect. Yeah, we had that. From 1911 to 1996, or 2011 if you want to be technical, there was a law where the state cinema agency Statens Biografbyu were responsible for examining movies to see if they contained anything what they found as inappropriate or morally offensive. If they found any movie with scenes that they considered to be that, they were either cut, edited or banned. Here are some examples. Django 1966, an incredible spaghetti western, banned, Creepshow 2 1987, a pretty good sequel to the fame horror anthology. Bad, but was later released on VHS with 10 minutes edited out. And The Punisher 1989, a kick-ass action movie based on a comic book of the same name, featuring Dolph Lundgren, a Swedish actor. Banned. Yeah, you get the idea. Seems that Fist of the North Star wasn't spared from that kind of treatment. And what kind of treatment did it get, you may ask? Well, out of the total 146 episodes the original series consisted of, only the first four episodes of the first seasons were dubbed into Swedish, at least in this movie. That's only 2.74%. But wait, there's more! Yes, not only did they dub just four episodes, they also stitched them together to make a movie out of them. Together with the awful dubbing and the rampant censorship, what was once an action-packed anime series became a Frankenstein's monster at the hands of the state cinema agency and those who made this dub. Oh lord. Now, finally, the last question is... WHO MADE THIS MONSTER?! Well... Before the movie even begins, this little vanity card shows up. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Ozone Media. Who the fuck is Ozone Media? From what I could gather from the very little information that seemed to exist of this company, it's a Swedish media distribution company who specializes in low-budget dubs of low-budget cartoons since the late 80s. We need to find some goddamn answers about this company. And where better to find just that than on their official website? Which... Looks about to have the same quality as the DVD. <laughs> this site will soon be replaced with a web shop. Are you sure about that? Right, I think the best place to start looking is in the DVD section. Ah shit! Guess I have to fire up the old time machine. Well, everybody, welcome to the year 2004. <laughs> Looks like their website hasn't been updated since, well, since they first started it in the year 2000. Guess that they haven't learned how to build a beautiful website using Square. Oh, right, the DVD section. Let's see what Ozone Media has in store for us. Oh, sweet Jesus! Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? I just wonder. I wasn't kidding when I said that they specialize in low-budget cartoons. We got classics like The Count of Monte Cristo, The Legend of Mulan, and Frank Einstein. 
as funny as all of this is, there's nothing about Ken the Great Bear Fist in here. Let's go ahead and try the film section. Ooh! Ladies and gentlemen, we will locate it, the anime. <laughs> ah! You know what they say, X marks the spot. So why don't we go ahead and dig around in there, ha <laughs> ha! Huh, it's not here, that's strange. Well, at least there's some interesting stuff in here. Let's see. We got Genshi Shonen Ryo, released on 6 VHS tapes. And looking into these tapes a bit further, at an online auction, someone bought the complete set for 91 US dollars. What the fuck? Silver Fang, released on 4 VHS tapes and, according to Swedish Wikipedia, became rather popular in Sweden and Finland around the late 80s. Hang on a minute. A smaller musical based on the series has also toured in several Finnish cities. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Oh! Hoppanaoli Musicali is a 2011 Finnish fan-made musical based on the Yoshihiro Takahashi's manga series Ginga Nagareboji Gin. Well, I'll be damned, this is actually fantastic. No, really, props to these guys. This entire thing was produced by volunteers and they covered all of the expenses themselves. They were really passionate and dedicated to making this musical possible. And I have to say, they really succeeded at it. In fact, down in the description, you will find a link to the official playlist where you can watch the entire two and a half hour long musical for yourself. I really recommend it. And to anyone who's watching this video who was either involved or an actor in this wonderful event, let me just say, Tämä musikaali oli uppia ja nautin jokaisesta sekunnista. I probably just butchered that. Uh, sorry. Now, I'm curious. How does the dub from Osoan Media compare to this? Shout out to Kantarell Kvinnans Nostalgihörna for that clip. That channel is a goldmine for this kind of stuff. I do recommend it. Right. We need to get back to the anime. Like this one, Kimagure Orange Road, released on four tapes and on DVDs about a decade later. It seems that this anime in particular is more special than the others. Like uh, three out of the seven entries on this page are of this anime. The others being the two previously mentioned ones, as well as Star Singer and Tenshi Muo. Six tapes and two DVDs respectively. Wait, what? what's this? The third episode of the popular series is now on video. Click here if you want to know more. Sure, why not? I'm sure you guys watching don't mind if we go for another little tangent. Alright, it's a little summary of what the show is about. Kurre and his sisters, Marie and Nina, have secret superpowers. They can run 100 meters in 3 seconds and move objects with their minds. Okay, that sounds like fun. Though, what really gets to me here are the localized names. Kurre, Marie, Nina and Madeleine. Listen, if you have to change the names of characters when localizing, don't use any common ones. Go full out 4 to the 4 kids. Use names like Ernst Erik, Ulla Britta, Shastin and Marta. Yeah, now those are some Swedish names. You can't get any more Swedish than that! Hold on a second. We recommend that you visit Superfamilian's well-kept Swedish website. Are you sure about that? There you can find information for all of the characters of the show. Hmm, don't mind if I do. Oh, it's an angel fire sight. We need to put on some fitting music before we enter. Hey, cutie minis! <laughs> wow. Now this is the kind of fan page from the mid notice that just has this... Mwah! Genesis quad to it that I just find nice. We should probably click on one of the links on the side here. Let's go to places. 
No, I don't know what I expected. Well, it's a collection of pictures of places. Places like where the characters live, where they go to school, and where they work. Together with a small description on each picture. Pretty much something to expect in these kinds of fan pages. Let's go to another page. This time... Uh, videos. Ah, it's a showcase of different home media releases of the show. Here we got the first Swedish release from the 80s. A forum where I can join Cartoon Barn Films Club. Bli gratis medlem i Cartoons Barn Films Club. And it's basically a club where you get news for upcoming shows and maybe win some prizes. I don't know what kind of prizes you would win, but my guess would be it must have been something like a comic book, a button, or maybe an action figure. You know, something that a kid would enjoy, or a 20-something year old gamer. Here's the Swedish re-release, released on DVDs and distributed by good old Ozone Media, complete with a little ad. And the last thing on this page are of the American releases from Animego, and America, what the fuck? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't these characters under 18? I need to get out of here before I get put on some kind of list. Jesus fuck. Why? Remember when this video was a review of Ken the Great Barefist? Yeah, me neither. Oh, alright. Oh, An Angel Fire website wouldn't be complete if there wasn't a guest book. So why don't we check it out? I'm totally obsessed with Super Familian. Just can't get enough. Can sit for hours and watch it. Without a doubt, the world's most wonderful anime. This is a fantastic page too. A very, very good insight about the world's best series, haven't watched the Swedish version, but the Japanese one beats them all. And Kasuga, Kiyosuke, Yugosai, Shishin, Shikibatsu. Hello, my name is Runya. Goodbye. I don't speak whatever this sign is, but it's still good. Yeah, okay, I think that's enough. If I spend another minute here, I'll just keep going down the rabbit hole of Ozone Media until I'm forever lost in its long and twisted tunnels. That's why I will give my map and compass of this adventure to you, dear viewer. Though, I must warn you of one thing. If you go and decide to harass and mock any of these people who appeared in this video, I will personally haunt your dreams for the rest of your miserable little life because I consider people who do such things to be monsters. And I don't like monsters. So, what did we learn today, ladies and gentlemen? Well, we learned that a Swedish dub of Fist of a North Star that some random Swedish Twitch streamer who watched a tiny bit of it like six years ago would be such a goddamn wonderful mess that the distribution company responsible for this DVD has been doing this kind of treatment to other animated series since the 80s. That there was a Finnish musical adaptation of an anime that's about dogs. And that the Swedish anime fan pages from the early 2000s were pretty... interesting. Now, my dear ladies and gentlemen, friends and everyone in between, this is where my video has to end. This was quite a fun experience, and I had quite the time during it. And also, I hope this little video here made you feel just a bit happier. Feel free to share this thing around. But for now, I have to say, I wish you the best of days for you and everybody around you. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.